There is a world-renowned marriage counselor named John Gottman, and John Gottman has been studying marriages his entire career. That's all he does, is study marriages. He has a whole team of people that studies them. And he claims that he can, he can predict whether or not a couple is going to get divorced with a 91% accuracy rate within the first 10 minutes of meeting them if they show the signs of fruitless fighting. Do you want to know what those signs are? It's scientifically proven that if you show all these signs, your marriage is in trouble. Well, the first sign is what we call harsh startup. Harsh startup means we need to talk. The harsh startup is you did it again. The harsh startup is beginning the conversation already abruptly, already negatively, and already with a hostile attitude. Well, the next sign is actually four things. Uh, Gottman calls it the four horsemen. It's defensiveness, contempt, which we've already, we've already talked about, criticism, and stonewalling. Those are the four horsemen that uh, together make up the next sign of divorce. Now, what is stonewalling? Stonewalling, which is, uh, is when one person in the couple is just not responding. Stonewalling is, yeah, mm-hmm, okay, yeah, sure. Maybe looking out the window, you're having a conversation, but they're not looking at you. They're not really telling you how you feel, how they feel. Uh, you don't really know what's going on inside of them. Appears like that person doesn't even care. The next sign is very much related to the, the previous four. It's called flooding. Flooding is when you have so many feelings that you can't even speak them. So they're so flooded with feelings, they can't tell you how they feel. It's not that they don't have a feeling. They've got so many, they can't pick one. And flooding is very dangerous because it leads to the next sign. The next sign is physiological distress. If you've been allowing the conflict in your marriage to go on for so long, the anger to not get resolved for so long, you're going to start having physical problems. You're going to start having ulcers, back aches, neck aches. You're going to start drinking more. You're going to start having physiological problems. You're going to start failing from the inside. The last two signs of marriages that are in distress that leads towards divorce are bad memories and failed repair attempts. What does bad memories mean? What it means is you interpret history negatively. You're only remembering the negative things from the past. It's like, yeah, I remember our wedding. Yeah, he was late. He was late to that. He's still late today. You forget all the good things and you remember all the bad things. You're reinterpreting history negatively bad memories, bad sign, leading to bad things in your relationship. And the last thing is failed repair attempts. This is really critical. Everybody fights. Even good marriages fight. Fighting in a marriage is not a problem. The problem is, what are you going to do about it? And the really critical thing is to be able to repair what you did. Fighting isn't a problem. Not being able to repair it is. And repair attempts can be simple. It can be as simple as coming to a common understanding. It can be as simple as uh, communicating that you're on the same side. But you've got to have the ability to get back on the beam. You've got to have the ability to get back on track again. You've got to have the ability to repair. Most marriages never really solve their problems. Yeah, I know. That's sad news, but it's true. Gottman has discovered this that you will spend most of your marriage fighting about the same issues over and over and over again. You're never going to see child rearing the same way. You're never going to see your in-laws the same way. You're never going to manage money the same way. You're never going to do lots of things the same way. You'll come to a, a common enough agreement to live with the difference between the two of you. But for most things that you fight about, you never do come to a common understanding of them. So why do people fight? You fight because you want to be connected. You feel disconnected and you're fighting to be reconnected. You think you're fighting about money. You think you're fighting about her parents, but you're not. You're fighting because I need to feel connected to you and I don't. And if you feel reconnected to each other, then the subject that you're fighting about doesn't become as important. In psychology, we say the thing is never the thing. And what I mean by that is you think you're fighting about something, you're not. You're fighting about whether or not we feel connected. And once we do feel connected, the thing all of a sudden doesn't seem so important.